What happens if you spend at least 20 minutes outside every single day? In 2017, I set out to find out. Welcome to the Humans Outside Weekly Diary, where I tell you my own lessons from a life spent outside. What did I do and learn while going outside this week? That and this week's real outdoor hero, up next. I stepped outside my door this Saturday for my long run, 20 miles. You might be thinking I'm absolutely bonkers for running 20 miles, and maybe I am, but it's my thing, so just leave it there. I'm getting ready for this marathon I do every year, and a marathon is about 26 miles. So it makes sense to run 20 miles as you get ready for it. Anyway, I stepped outside my door this Saturday for my 20-mile run, and it was snowing. This was not the weather vibe I was looking for. We'd had temperatures in the low 40s and mid-30s recently, and I was dressed for moving for a long time in cold weather. But the forecast had promised me the snow would be done by 10 a.m., and I was not ready for that to be a lie. I was not ready for what you would think of as a magical snow globe world if only you weren't trying to go for a run. That's because the magic isn't really a thing when you're faced with wet, cold, slidey running for hours on end. Oh, and here's the biggest problem. I wasn't dressed for it. That's my own fault. And I realized my mistake about two miles in. But of course, I was too stubborn to turn around, put on better tights, and keep going then. No, no. I just kept running, knowing I was running straight into cold misery. Okay, so fine. Being uncomfortable during this run was my own fault. Even beyond the fact that I was doing something uncomfortable, running 20 miles. But what it did do was give me plenty of time to think about how uncomfortable I was and why being uncomfortable is okay, even beneficial. If you like to go outside like me, you've probably been faced with discomfort at some point. You were cold. You were hot. You were tired. Something hurt. There was a serious and unacceptable lack of snacks. Discomfort, in short, is a part of going outside. You don't have to be a runner to know what I'm talking about here. Getting okay with being uncomfortable has been on my mind quite a bit this week because I just aired on Humans Outside my conversation with author Michael Easter. Michael had come up here to Alaska and did a long hunting trip up in the middle of nowhere. He was out there just over a month, and while it wasn't winter, it also wasn't anywhere near warm and comfortable. They did a lot of heavy hiking, they moved heavy meat after they shot the caribou, and they spent a lot of time being uncomfortable. The experience sent him into research on the benefits of being uncomfortable and all the ways Americans studiously avoid doing so. He wrote a book about it, The Comfort Crisis. I really enjoyed the book. I listened to it while training for my 100 miler this summer and spending lots and lots and lots of time being uncomfortable. As you can see, I have a habit of doing things that will absolutely result in me being uncomfortable. I remember the first time I decided to do a marathon. I was doing a training run that was maybe 10 or 12 miles long, so nowhere near the race distance. And the seasoned runner friend I was with said, you know running a marathon hurts, right? I did not, in fact, know that. But boy, do I know it now. And yet I keep doing this stuff. I keep walking or running right smack into the face of discomfort, whining a little and then hanging out there anyway. Why is that? What is it doing for me? And what is it that getting out there does for you? Of course, that's the subject of Michael's book, which you can read, and you can listen to our podcast episode with him, which focuses on that and the benefits of getting out and staying bored, which, by the way, is also uncomfortable. But I can tell you what I find in it, and it's pretty simple. I find that doing this hard stuff outside, that getting and staying really uncomfortable, gives me the ability to do hard things during the rest of my life. It's not exactly something I think about. I don't encounter a tough or uncomfortable decision at work and think, okay, now I can stomach this because boy, was my butt cold on Saturday and we endured. But I have noticed that the more time I spend outside, the more I can see in retrospect that inside hard things are okay. I don't run away from them. I don't make someone else do them. I do them because I can tackle uncomfortable things. Maybe call it exposure therapy. It also has helped me do bigger things outside. I've had so many great adventures that I've been open to tackling, and I only considered because I knew I had done something vaguely similar before and not yet died and even had fun. It also gives me an extra measure of patience. I am categorically not a patient person. 
But since I started doing hard things outside on purpose, I've become more patient, which has given me a higher tolerance for things that were previously likely to drive me insane during my daily life. And that's because the only way to get through something uncomfortable when you can't or won't quit is to move through it for as long as it takes. As we head into the colder times of year, many of us will be faced with more opportunities to be uncomfortable. And by many of us, I definitely mean me. Now is a great time to gird your loins, as the Old Testament says, and get ready for what you'll do when things aren't meeting the comfort benchmark you were looking for. Are you going to stick it out? Are you going to head outside anyway to find what awesomeness awaits you? I hope so. And as you do so, you can see photos of my outdoor time for what I hope is a little extra inspiration if it helps. I post a photo every single day on Instagram and Facebook at Humans Outside and with the hashtag HumansOutside365. I'd love to see your outside time too, so I hope you share it. And until next time, we'll see you out there.